Hello, and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Ownership of Copyright, Section 13. Copyright provides rights holders with a lot of control over the way works can be used and reused. Have you ever wondered who owns the copyright for works that you create? What if you write a report, design an image, or compose a jingle while at work? Have you ever wondered whether you own the copyright in works you created in the course of your employment? Ownership of copyright is covered in Section 13 of Canada's Copyright Act. Section 13.1 makes it clear that the author of a work is the first owner of the copyright in that work. However, there can be exceptions to this general rule. Section 13.3 explicitly states that the employer owns the copyright for works produced by someone who is employed under a contract or apprenticeship and where those works are made in the course of employment unless there is an agreement to the contrary. This does not apply in the same way to all types of employment, however. Section 13.3 also specifies that, for contributions to newspapers, magazines, and similar periodicals, the author retains a right to restrain the publication of the work otherwise than as part of a newspaper, magazine, or similar periodical. While the application of Section 13 can seem straightforward, there can be cases where application of this section is less clear. For example, if you are an employee and you create something outside the course of your employment, but you used the employer's equipment, then the employer may have a claim to the copyright in that work. Similarly, if you create a work outside of regular working hours, but the work is directly related to, or stemming from your duties as an employee, the employer may have a claim to the copyright. If such extracurricular activities are anticipated, it is important to discuss copyright ownership issues with your employer up front, and where possible, to address these in a contract or via amendments to a collective agreement. In some sectors, such as academia, employment contracts or collective agreements often allow academic staff members to retain copyright in works created in the course of their employment. For example, it's typical for faculty members at a university to own the copyright on articles they write, even though these works are created in the course of their employment. However, it is important to note that for other kinds of materials, such as administrative documents, and for certain academic staff, such as contract sessional instructors or academics working at many colleges, copyright in such works may be retained by the employer. Employment status is another issue related to copyright ownership. Section 13 covers employees, but it does not extend to freelancers. However, determining the line between a freelancer and an employee can be complicated. As stated earlier, it is always important to discuss ownership of copyright up front and have it clarified in writing. Governments are another large employer in Canada. Copyright in works produced by government employees in the course of their employment is normally owned by the employer. The definition of a government employee can be broader than you might think. For example, to what extent is someone who is incarcerated a government employee? What works produced by an inmate would be considered works created in the course of that employment? While there are no provisions in the Act that address copyright held by incarcerated persons, esteemed Canadian legal scholar David Vaver notes a judicial precedent that vests copyright with the Crown for a painting produced by a federal inmate as part of their rehabilitation. Court decisions like this one help us better understand the relationship between statutory provisions and their interpretation in real-world scenarios. In Holly v. Canada, the plaintiff, artist John Holly, while incarcerated at Frontenac Institution, a minimum security facility in Kingston, Ontario, was assigned to create a large mail for the institution's common room as part of his work program. As described in the court decision, all inmates at Frontenac Institution were gainfully employed through their participation in a work program. By agreement, the mail became a large painting for the dining room. The painting was completed and Holly was later released. He then claimed ownership of the copyright in the painting. The case was brought before the Federal Court Trial Division, where it was decided that the painting and the copyright in the painting was owned by the Crown. Given that the work was found to have been created by Holly during the course of his employment as an inmate, the court found that in dealing with a literary work or a work of art made or created by an inmate in a penal environment, there is no reason to apply different criteria or to depart from normal rules. The judge in this case determined that the painting was a product of an inmate's labor during work hours rather than during leisure hours, and therefore, it was decided that the copyright in the painting was owned by the employer, which in this case was the Government of Canada. When a work is created in the course of employment, the employer becomes the first owner of the copyright in the work. 
However, Section 13 also deals with the assignment or licensing, in whole or in part, of rights by the copyright holder. Section 13.4 makes it explicit that no assignment or grant of a license is valid unless it is in writing and signed by the rights holder or an authorized representative. In other words, any transfer of rights will require a written agreement. Regardless of your employer, it is always important to ensure that you fully understand contracts and collective agreements that might specify how copyright ownership in various types of works is determined. You should now be able to understand how Section 13 governs the ownership of copyright for works created in the scope of employment, recognize certain employment situations where ownership of copyright may be unclear, and describe the importance of having copyright ownership covered in contracts or collective agreements. This has been the University of Alberta's opening of copyright module on ownership of copyright. Thank you for your attention.